guys, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. My my dad came over and wanted to pick up the drill. And my dad and uh, his wife, Cindy, have never seen the new apartment. So they wanted to talk and see it and all that stuff. So I had to kind of give them the, the grandioso tour and all that stuff. So I do I do apologize for being gone so long. Oh, my word. We've gotten some bits. Shives for 245 bits. Thank you. Thank you, man. I, I very much appreciate it. What all have I missed from chat? Probably quite a bit. Uh, I mean, you guys were talking to yourself. I hope that's fine. Did the music just stop? I think... Did the music stop? The music did stop. I do apologize. Let's get that back going. Because, I mean, we're still talking about cards. We're still talking about stuff. We're not going into a game. Let's get some Let's get some music. Just nice to feed the background. No need to call 911. Oh, guys. I am alive. I do apologize. Oh, I'm just reading chat. Like, the, maybe we should call 911. The wisps are not entertaining us. Oh. I'm sorry, guys. Spark wisps. Spark wisp and you're dead. You were getting worried. Mud Turtle, do not worry about me, man. Do not worry. You can worry about a lot of people, but not me. I am I am solid. I am golden here. Guys, as I was saying before I before I left. Also, let me let me go ahead and put a, a marker here because. It's 112 in Denmark in the morning. Freshen! Oh my god, it's Monday. It's well two Tuesday for you. Dude, thank you for sticking with me, man. I mean if you gotta go to bed, go to bed, man. I do it. Do what you gotta do. My whole thing just minimized. I don't know if that's how it. Uh, but guys, in case you didn't know this, it's 1.32. You have vacation. Fresher. That's awesome to hear, man. That's awesome to hear. So, let me take a sip of water because we're going to talk about some amazing new kindred cards. <laughs> wow. Uprising cards. I, I need to get some water. We're good. We're good. Guys, now, last we talked was Saturday morning. I don't think. Oh, I get you. 911, it's 112 there. Okay, now I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Guys, can we go ahead and just just talk about some of these cards? Okay, can we just do that? That is really bright. That is real. That's really white. Wow. Woo! Look at my face. It's so blown up. Guys. On... Storm Saturday. And why not? Surprise stream. Oh! Not really a surprise. It was scheduled as it is. Usually it's on Mondays. But welcome to the stream, man. We're going to be talking about the new lights. We just talked about the news. We're going to be talking about the cards since Saturday, since I streamed last. Then we're going to jump right into Warhammer. Because Warhammer came out with a solo adventure campaign that I am dying to get my hands on. So, hey, why not? Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mud Turtle. Yes, AY not. Uh, if you want to just go down below in the panels, it's my stream schedule right there if you want to go ahead and make sure you don't skip a single show. Now, as Freshen said, this thing's holding the storm show, which is getting rotated out. It was actually banned. Well, I mean, it's retired. It's not banned. Hey, why not? No worry about it. Don't worry. No bad. No one's bad. Everyone's good here. Everyone's super chill. Super fine. Guys, this Mari Stormguard, let me just go ahead and read this to you since you guys can already read it yourselves. But I feel like I'm I owe you that as the as the host of the show. Mari Stormguard is a rare water buff with three clunky corners that read 333. Three, three. Unique, which means you can always have one out on the board, the other ones are always dormant, so keep that in mind. But it reads, reduce the first damage you receive per turn by rotation. When the enemy plays a buff, rotate this one step forward, which means which means, guys. This is essentially a better a better Turkle Captain, right? It, it prevents more damage from the first one, right? And it rotates every time your opponent lays a buff. Mind you, Turkle Captain only rotated when your opponent didn't have a buff, but all your opponent had to do was just wait one turn without a board, and then it just went away. This one, like, it stays out there until they buff. Until they buff. And it's preventing three, not two. This is amazing. This is amazing. And yes, Mud Turtle said it, it busts aggro. Aggro right now has been heavy attack cards that are like five or six damage, right? Now it's always going to be preventing three. My, uh, in like a, uh, an attrition deck like Dread has been known with the tentacles, uh, tentacles, uh, it's those tick, tick damages aren't going to matter that much because it's always it's only the first damage. It's not every damage. So aggro is really going to get hurt by this card because A, it doesn't just rotate for three turns. They have to buff. And aggro tends to not have a lot of buffs. It tends to just be attack cards, right? So this is just going to stick out there until they remove it. That's awesome. Also, I'm going to also note this. It is a water card. A water card that is going to sit on the board. We have we have not had a whole lot of water buffs that just, just stick. That just sit on the board. 
were losing Suspicious Squid. That was probably one of the only ones that just did that. All the other ones were Lightning. This one is going to sit on the board until it either gets removed or until your opponent lays buffs to remove it. Like, uh, spin it out. So, like, yeah, Little Blammo. Perfect. This, this card is going to be so good for water in general. If not just for the fact that it's it's a sticky water buff. We're finally getting things that might, I say might, might make Fearless Diver decent. I don't know. I don't know. He still needs four water buffs. Like, that's a lot of buffs. But if they stick, if they stick and stay on the board for his four corners. I don't know. I don't know. We are also getting 72 new cards that we haven't seen yet. But, dude. Dude, I cannot wait. First, and I know you are an aggro, dude. I know you are an aggro, man. You got lug nut locked down. I know that. But, uh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, Freshgen, here's the thing for you and Lugnut. If you have your items equipped and you attack with Lugnut, the one ping damage is technically the first damage you do in the turn. So the first ping damage gets blocked out by Mari Stormguard. Then your full attack damage goes through. Just saved you, man. Just saved you. Aggro's not dead entirely. You just got to think of ways to get around it. Um, but yeah, yeah, guys, this is amazing. I love this buff. I love it so much. It's, it's so good. It's so cool. Like I said, it it uh, Bubblefish has always been one of the best defensive buffs to put out there, and then they made it a beast to make it even better. And that one's like two, three, three. It's gonna prevent all the ping damage. It's gonna do everything like that. Now Water got a buff that is essentially what Turkle Captain was. It's what Turkle Captain wanted to be, or I guess what I mean. Some people still play Turkle Captain, but now you have Mari Stormguard. And in my opinion, Mari Stormguard is better than Turkle Captain. Like that card is just so good. It's a different entirely situation because this one sticks on board for the people that don't have buffs. Whereas Turkle Captain, you're like, yeah, I want to lay this. And then aggro came and it's like, well, you don't even run buffs. So Turkle Captain sits out there for one turn and then goes away. Which is why this card is so much better. It's so much better. It's amazing. This this is going to help Storm kind of outlast aggro. It's going to give Storm that more. I mean, it already is like the best fatigue matchup in the game. But like, it'll help it be more control Storm as opposed to fatigue mill Storm, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Uh, this buff only rotates when the opponent buffs. Yes. No, I'm sorry. When your enemy. So if you're playing multiplayer, your enemy needs to buff, not your target. Keep that in mind, too. But yeah, when, when, when your opponent buffs, that's when it rotates. So, I mean, if they somehow get like four actions in a turn and rotate this thing out on one turn, that's cool on them for blowing, you know, four cards to rotate this. Four buffs, even. But, I mean, yeah, this is going to stick out there until they have four buffs. Or unless they buff removal it. So that's really good. Really good. I like this card. I like this card a lot. It's amazing. Next one we have is the Deep Sea Hunter Rock. This guy has water superiority. As we've seen before, water superiority has been one of the better ones to have. Uh, just A, because of Droplet. Droplet makes water superiority a good, a good one to have. We haven't seen much... With lightning superiority that really, really broke the, t like broke into the top tiers, um, but water and air have been the top two ones. Um, water always being kind of the better one because you can always heal, and as we've seen right now, fatigue is what wins. Um, but this one is a ability discard one water card to move one unaligned action card from your deck to your hand. This guy I see being a very aggressive style type of person. Like you can literally just discard cards that you don't necessarily need like if you're playing a more controlling matchup and you don't need healing but your unaligned cards are like damage just ditch them ditch them for that or if you're playing like a more creeble deck and all of your unaligned cards are the creeble cards and you're looking for creeble stuff ditch a water card to look for a creeble card like that there's a lot of cool things just because it says unaligned unaligned has beasts it has locations it has machines it has everything so depending on what you put in here for the unaligned this guy could be really cool to play he could be really different to play uh, I know a lot of people right now, um, Pumatoro says, hold up. Hold up to what? Yeah, Kuitu is, I think, is the only good that's, uh, Storm Hero. Mud Turtle, you could. You could use Colossi Skybeam with this guy as well, correct. You could discard it, search your deck for it, and put it in your hand, and then lay it first turn. Always. 
if you had a water card, that it's got to have a water card in hand. But yeah, Kuitu, I think, is probably the only one with lightning superiority that you've seen run minor decently. Like, eh. Mind you, a lot of Storm heroes out there right now that are doing really well just have no superiorities. So there's that, too. Did the music stop again? Why are you stopping? Just keep playing. But yeah, I think this card... Yeah, Mudthrow, now the ideas are spinning. Exactly. Like, you, you, you need to take a little more than just 30 seconds to look at these cards and really give an opinion on them. Like, when you look at this, you're like... Deep Sea Hunter Rack, and he's water superiority. You know, you can discard a water card from a lion card. You're like, ah, it's not that good. I mean, I'd rather just have Spark Quest, boom, you're dead, right? Everyone would rather have that. But then you start thinking of like, wait a second. What unaligned cards could I run? Are there new ones out that could possibly help me in a situation? Because remember, unaligned cards are meant to be sort of the tech cards that you like put into a deck on a certain matchup. And like, in this game, those certain matchups are like your bad matchups or your ones that you're like you're drawing to try and find that uh, tech card that you put in there for the specific situation this guy literally just says hey i i put a card in here i sideboarded it in or something like that for this matchup and as soon as i draw it i know this matchup's gonna swing my way guess what guys ditch it search for my deck for it like it's not even like get it back from your discard pile or like play it from your hand you search your deck that is insane value to be able to pick a specific card that you put in there for a reason and then go looking for it and grab it for the reason you put it in there, right? So like, just just think about this. You're you're you have like one card in hand, right? A grand and good evening, my wonder thunder Wranglethor. Thank you very much for tuning in, man. Thank you, man. But yeah, think about this. Like your opponent has a large hand size, right? Your opponent has a huge hand size. You got like one card in hand. It's a wonder card. They saw your hand, right? They saw your hand due to the new uh, crystal card. Or no, it's Earth card, I think, this time around. You get to look at your opponent's hand. They also can play the Wind card, look at your hand. There's a lot of look at your hand kind of stuff. And literally just be like, okay, he doesn't have this certain card. Maybe I can draw for a little while, right? Oh, he got, he's got a Water card. He has a Water card in hand. You don't know what he's got in his deck. All of a sudden, he ditches it, gets a Crushing Charger, and Crushes Charges you when you had 12 cards in your hand. You're like, oh. Oh, that's... That's bad. Like, that this guy... At, at first glance, like I said, a lot of people were just like, hey, let's search for an unaligned card. Why would I need that? And then you start thinking of like, yeah, what are the unaligned cards really meant to be used for? Like, what do you put them in there for? You put them in for tech situations. You put them in for like uh, Creeble Monk. You put it in so your opponent can't use abilities. Crushing Charger. You put it in to really hurt the people that have large hands. Uh, Creeble Saboteur. You put it in so that your opponent, you can get through the your opponent's wall whenever you need it. Like, you put in very situational unaligned cards. This guy just says, hey, there's a water card any water card ditch it and get that card you put in the deck to win the matchup that's what this guy says to me which is awesome like that that right there that value screams better than uncommon that value is screams better than uncommon i like this card i like this card a lot uh i'm not saying it's gonna be like the best card i'm gonna say it's gonna be a very like situational but determining on what the meta is he's probably gonna be one of the better heroes to go to if the meta is very conditional, has a very, like, oh, if he runs this card, I lose the matchup. Like, in Hearthstone, it's like, yeah, I play this really strong taunt deck, but if you run Silence, I'm dead. Like, that kind of thing. Like, if you runs two or three specific cards, then my deck is gone. This guy just was like, okay, I need to always have those cards in hand. I will always have those cards in hand. You can't stop me. You can't say, oh, he got a bad draw. Like, no, 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 no. I get to search for it. I get to search for it. And we're all good. Like, that, that screams to me a lot of a lot of really good potential in this one hero and i i'm excited for it i think it's gonna be a lot of fun not, then again i think all the cards are fun but that's just me i'm a very fun guy hey next one we have is the potion master mixie we have a astral hero uh no no alignment or no superiority but what this card does read is when you play a creeple card reveal the top card of your deck if the revealed card is solar deal one damage to your target if it's gravity heal for one if neither you take one damage the card is then moved to the bottom of your deck. So you don't really necessarily get to draw it. So I don't know. I'm trying to think of who. I think it was Lolliet revealed this card. Um, Lolliet revealed this card. And I, I will admit, I do apologize. I was not able to go back and fully like listen to everyone's review card reviews yet. I've been really busy this week, this weekend, everything like that. Uh, so I do apologize. I wasn't able to even go back to the past streamers and listen to what they said about these cards. So I, I do want to do that sometime, maybe later this week, and listen to what other people have been saying about these cards. Because when I saw it, Everyone was like, eh, I mean, it's kind of an iffy card. Uh, it, it's what the card text says. It's like, oh, if it's a Creeble card, you get to look at the top card. But then you don't even get to draw it. You put it on the bottom or whatnot. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, it's what this card doesn't say that has me happy about it. And what this card doesn't say 
is, quote, this number cannot be increased by effects, end quote. Okay, can we just go ahead and can we put that on there right now? With Astral, it's really easy to figure out what your top card is almost at all times, whether you put it there yourself or you're looking at the top four and you're mismanaging it or you're doing something. So then, hey, guess what? I have this damage increase stuff, or um, I have a, uh, what is the, um, the observatory, and I draw a planetary alignment. I just healed for three and dealt three. Mind you, that combo goes to the bottom, but, like, if you play a Kreeble card after a Kreeble card and you get two solars, depending on also your damage from the planetary, or the solar, or the, 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 wow, the observatory, like, your Kreeble card could be dealing damage, right? It could be dealing damage. So, like, uh, I don't know what Kreeble cards are now because I don't know them all by name. But the Kreeble card does damage, then increased by the observatory. Then the top card, which you probably played as its solar, is going to do one plus two. So, then three damage, it goes to the bottom of the deck, goes to the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the deck, Right? Then you lay another Kreeble card. Put your top card, which also increases by observatory. Then that card increases by observatory. Put it on the bottom of the deck. Uh, you're looking at Starhorn, Tusker, etc. I mean, it, well, I mean, if you play a card, it goes into the discard pile the first time. It's got to be a Kreeble card. So Starhorn, Tusker, like, it would increase the first value, yeah. But Skyward Observatory, like, increases all your damage and healing. So it, it gets really nuts, really value. And then, of course, guys, of course... This is a hero that I'm also sitting here thinking of playing that one combo, which flips both your, you and your opponent's deck upside down, right? Because you put all those cards that you wanted to draw at the bottom of your deck, and then later in the game you flip it over, so all those cards that you probably wanted or something like that are on the bottom of your deck, which is now the top of your deck. Like, th this guy, I, I can see being kind of a meme deck, but like, it could be a good meme deck type of thing. Just because it puts it on the bottom, and then it actually... It's just a hero where you almost want to run that combo buff, which is almost never seen. I have never seen anyone run that outside of memes. But this guy doesn't have a superiority at all. You can run Gravity Well, too. Exactly! Mud Turtle, exactly. You can run Gravity Well to look at the bottom card and put it in your hand. So if you really wanted that card, put it in the bottom of your hand. I completely forgot about Gravity Well until you just said that, Mud Turtle. Wow, this guy got so much better for me. But, like... Yeah, it's to me, everyone's looking at it like, wow, I mean, this card doesn't say a whole lot. Like, yeah, you play a Kreeble card, and then you don't even get to draw the card. It goes to the bottom of your deck. And I'm sitting here like, yeah, but you know what it doesn't say? It doesn't say this number can't be increased by effects, which means there's a lot of ways to increase this by effects. Like, a lot of ways. As we discussed, Starhorn Tusker is one of them. You have the Observatory. If you're running any, any other color, you could have it be amplified by a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of things that could amplify this number. Um, and it... It's a good card. It's a good card. I mean, if without it, it would probably be a common, right? Without it, it would be a common card, common hero, hands down. If it only does the one damage extra, it has like it's just whatever you like, creeple, you get to do something else. No, but it can be increased by effects. It can set up manipulation of the bottom of your grave, or bottom of your deck, which is different than Astral's ever done, to essentially make that the new top of your deck. Like that's that's how I'm just picturing this hero. That's just one person's opinion, one person's idea of how to play this guy. You could come up with something completely different and be like, yeah, I, I come up with a completely different idea. That's awesome. And that's what's great about these heroes is there's not just one way to think about it. It's, they're not just straightforward. You you go in. Where is, is like auto shuffle just off? Did I go through the entire CD? I apologize. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. I don't know. Um, but yeah, this, this card is really cool. I'm not saying it's an amazing card. I'm saying that People need to give it more credit for what creditors do. Because every card has its upsides. And if you can't see them yet, give it a second. Give it a second. Let someone else tell you about the card. And be like, oh, I never even thought about that. Mud Turtle just said, yeah, you can also run Gravity Well and make it better. And I'm like, I didn't even think of Gravity Well. I'm sitting here looking at Planetary or at the Skyward Observatory. And he's looking at Planetary or at Gravity Well. I really just want to say Planetary Alignment. I really do. 12 damage, man. There it is. But yeah, I mean, just get into a discussion about these cards. Don't, don't, like, shun them. Don't try and convince someone of your opinion. Discuss them. Discuss them. That's what I, that's what I want from you guys, is don't, don't, like, talk bad about these cards. Don't immediately get tunnel vision on a card. Talk about them. Tell someone else, like, hey, I like this card because of this. And they'll be like, oh, I never thought about that. I like this card because of this. And it's like, I wow, oh, that's, I never even thought about playing it like that. Like, don't, don't tell someone that you're not going to play it because something else is better. Talk about how you would play this card. 
That's what gets great discussion. That's what gets amazing card discussion on that. Because then you start thinking of new ideas. Then you start thinking of like, hey man, I never like maybe I can play that card. Like maybe this card works in a in a in a deck I'm building that I didn't even think about because I only thought of it one way. Exactly. If I wanted your opinion, I would have given it to you. But no, I mean that that's that's what I love to hear. That's what I love to see you guys are doing. Is you're talking about these cards in a in an actual discussion. You're not just saying like, oh, this card's bad because of this other card is way better. It's like, well, I mean. Those cards don't always run the same. They're not Awakening, where it's just, yeah, this card does 5 damage, but this card does 6 damage. So why would you run a 5 damage card when there's a 6 damage card? Like, th there's that way back from Awakening. But now there's these with all these different di uh, rule mechanics and uh, word usage of the sentence, like how the sentence is structured, that makes everything work differently and uniquely. That you can never just say, well, why would I run this? Because this is already better, right? Like, you, you can't say that anymore. You can't say that anymore. You can try and prove me wrong. I'm sure someone other is like, yeah, I found something right here. Razor, you're, just, you're wrong. And I could be wrong. But I would not have known that until you told me about it. Discussion point made. On to the next one. The Vibrant Glare. Vibrant Glare is the new Solar Solar combo buff. Now, the other Solar Solar one was just 10 damage. I mean, very basic stuff. Very basic, 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 basic from Awakening. It was an amazing buff. Or amazing attack. Which, I'm surprised didn't see a whole lot more play, but it's probably because, you know, it was two solar when all the other really good ones were one of each, which were just super easy to pay for. Gravity Bubble, Planetary Alignment, Solar Wind was two solar and a gravity, but, like, why not, right? I didn't even see that combo or that, uh, that one played, especially because they had Black Hole. Nine damage for an easier payment cost. Uh, but Vibrant Glare is four damage when it comes into play, so already instant impact on the board. I like cards like that. I like cards that have instant impact, especially if it's a buff. It has instant impact, even though Miles won. And then has a continuous effect that makes it worth keeping on the board. And this one is whenever you draw a card, deal one damage to your target. Now, this one does say this can't be increased by effects. Notice how this one doesn't say that. This one does say that. It's because this one is meant to be increased, people. This one is not. This one's just good because it's when you draw a card. Guys, what is Astro really good at doing? Drawing cards. Astro's really good at drawing cards. It's also really good at additional actions, which can be used to draw cards. Oh my word! Oh, and the fact that it's double solar, the fact that it's double solar means it's really easy to pay for, and it goes in so many of the mythic heroes. It goes into um, Tuktu. It goes into the new uh, oh, uh, Onyx, which is just two solar. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff like this. Um, what what are some other ones that are just solar? Uh, it can go into uh, Asavak, which is solar death gravity. It can go into Asavak. Asavok's pretty good at drawing cards with death. Like, I'll say it again, Star Tamer Calic. Oh, that's that's dirty. I mean, that's a lot of ping damage shives that can't be increased, but that's still, like, if you get that out for one turn, you could draw, like, 12 cards and have this combo buff deal 12 ping damage. That's nuts. That's really good. Yeah, Star Tamer Calic suddenly becomes a top-tier hero again. Back before Flying Fortress didn't get unique, right? Like, it's there's so many cool things. Um... It would have been cool in Fairpang. I mean, yeah. Because Fairpang loves to draw cards. Like, I'll take one if you take one. Like, that'd be really cool. Which is probably why Fairpang doesn't get to equip items, right? Like, there's a little bonkers. Um, what, what other Mythic Heroes are out there that run solar? What other Mythic Heroes out there run solar? Bye bye Mountain Forts. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you have a draw version of the Tundra that would go into... Yeah, exactly. I mean, it goes good in just straight Astral. Uh, I said Tuktu. Uh, uh, I said Tuktu. I said Onyx. I said uh, uh, Asavak. Um, Fair Pang is Nature Astral, which is primarily Nature. Um, the Beast, uh, Super Atacari. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's that, that's a tier that literally just says draw a card and do something right with it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I'll draw a card, ping you for one, and I get to do a bonus effect when I draw the card. Also, guys, Astronomer with this? Yeah, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'll draw four cards and deal four damage to you. That seems pretty good. Seems pretty good to me. I have a new subscriber to my YouTube channel, guys. Did you know that? Now you know. Thank you very much for that. Uh, but yeah, guys, like th this, this buff, also, it's common. So this is going to be really easy to get, even in draft. This one is going to be fun. I have a feeling this card is going to 
I'm going to see some decent play, especially if cards like Eternal Dawn uh, and a lot of other things. Oh, I love Eternal Dawn. But, I mean, this is also just double solar. You know what else is double solar and double gravity? Uh, wow, can't think of it. Um, Reality Rift. Yeah, Reality Rift. Easy payment for it. Like, this, I, I like Vibrant Glare. I think it's a big step up from what its replacement was uh, of the 10 damage one, because I don't think it needed 10 damage. I, they had so many direct damaging stuff. I think they need more, uh, more cards with different mechanics added to them. And Vibrant Flare, or Vibrant Glare fits really nice into it. Fits really nice. Also, can we just appreciate that art? That, like, 95% of the stuff behind it is from Dread. I immediately saw that and was like, guys, is this is this going to be good for Asavak? Because it has all the Dread stuff in it? I, I see three of the five cards in there are Dread. No, three of the six beasts are Dread. Are just Dread. Uh, Corona Loop, yeah. There you go, Fresh. And Corona Loop works really well with this. Rip Devour. Ah, oh, Dev I mean, it was good as a one of. It was really good as a one of. I think it was overpowered as a three of. If they were able to make a, a, a new keyword that said, like, hey, you can only include one of this in your deck or something like that, if that was a keyword, deck building would also be a lot more dynamic as well. Which is what I really liked about Classic is that they, they had some cards where you can only include one of, which made deck building a real different experience. Like, yeah, these cards are really good. They're really good as one ofs. So I want to have them. But what can I make, like, what can I run with just two of? What am I okay cutting for that one slot? Like, there was a lot of really cool things to think about in Classic, which is why I really like Classic. Uh, I just hope they come up with a keyword that is kind of like unique. I always said that unique should be that keyword and they should think of something else for it. But they sh I, I down the line, I hope they do come up with like just a keyword of like you can only include one of these in your deck. One of these action cards, like a combo card, but like it's it the power level is back to Awakening's power level. But then again, you can only have one of them in your deck. I think that'll that'll make deck building uh, a new experience to have. Because um, I know back in the day, I ran a granite deck that was literally just like three, 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 three. The entire list was all threes because it was just straightforward, did its own thing, did not need anything bonus extra to it. And I won almost every tournament I was in with it. It was great. It was streamlined granite, just twenty seven damage in one turn type of thing. Really fun. Guys, it's time. Can you believe it? It's Monday. Mythic Monday. We have our cross-order combos. Says, uh, Wrangler says, Doesn't a Digicard game have Legendary as a one-of in the deck keyword? Um, Magic the Gathering uh, has Legendary in the keyword, meaning one can be out in play. So it's kind of like their Legendary keyword is what Lightseekers is unique is, where you can only have one of its name out in play, but you can have four of it in a deck. Uh, Hearthstone has legendaries like that, but you can only include one of. But Hearthstone is also limited to only two copies at maximum from a deck, not three or four. So, like, it, it's needed to be like that way, so you don't include multiple things like that. But, I mean, there is a lot of games where it's like only one of is in, allowed in your deck. Um, I know Warhammer, they finally came out with a Nurgle where you could have seven copies of the deck. I can't wait to find out a deck with that. That's going to be super fun. But, like, I, there is just, you can write it on the card, like, only one of these can be included in the deck. But, um... I think, I think just making it a new keyword and adding it onto some cards would be really good. I think that would be really good to have. So, hopefully that comes in the future. Play Fusion. Just jot that down on a little notepad you got going. I think I see it with a pen. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a pencil because I make some bad ideas that you're just like, no, we're going to erase that. But that's what happens. Anyway, guys, back to this rare... Sorry, no, I mean, it is a rare, but this cross-order combo. We have something that's taken over for... Oh, God. Sunblast, I think is what it was called. Solar Blast. The Tech Astro one that was just 7 damage, 7 healing, and then digitally eradicated to 6 damage, 6 healing, because it has a bit too much 14-point swing. Calibration Stance. 6, 5, and 4. What do these quarters mean? You might have... Star Blast. Thank you, Shives. And Ranglethor. Now, you may ask, what do, these car what do these quarters mean? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. These quarters mean if your last discarded card is an attack card, Deal rotation damage to your target. If your last discarded card is a defend card, heal yourself for rotation. Otherwise, draw a card. Right? Otherwise, just draw a card. So if it's an attack, you're dealing extra damage. So if you're an aggro deck, you're going to love this. Right? If you're playing control, who defends a lot, which is what Astral really does well, it's going to heal you. It's going to be a big heal, which is really good. But then if you just want card draw, put it on a line card down. And then you get card draw. There, this card is all around good. There's no downside to it. 
There's no downside. We've been seeing a lot of Astro cards lately. It's like, hey, if it's not aligned, you take damage, or if it's like not lunar, you take damage and all that stuff. So it's like, there's a little downside, which maybe you can work into a mechanic that works really well. But this one is just says like, hey, no matter what it is, you're getting a benefit from it. Hey, that is awesome. That is awesome. This card is going to be seeing so much. It's going to be incredibly good. Six damage, five damage, four damage. What is that? Fifteen damage on a combo. If you have attacks, if you're aggro, that's 15 damage from this. Super good. If you're playing more control, 15 healing. That's really good. Even if you want to, like, yeah, you're setting it up where maybe you want a card draw. Because of, oh, I don't know, maybe a Vibrant Clare is out and you just really like picking them for one instead of hitting them for five. I don't know. You'll draw a card. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? Right? I mean, yeah. I would do that. Now, also, this is a another tech buff. So if you think about this with Halvar, if you have enough uh, gravity cards under Halvar, this damage will get increased. And because all the gravity cards are being stored in him, best chances are you have a tech card. And that tech card is probably an attack card. Which means, bam, Calibration Stamps like, is already just dealing damage where Halvar wants it to. And that's increased by three on each corner. If he's got his uh, thing all, all primed up and ready to go. That's amazing. That's insanely amazing. Calibration stance. It's just good. It's just it's it's good value all around. It's not like big game ending turns, nothing like that. I don't think any of these crossover combos are leaning back into the territory. Um you could also do eleven damage to draw one card. Yeah, you could. Freshman, you very much well could. But I I what I'm really happy to see is that none of these crossover combos that we're getting are leaning into the territory of like you lay this to win the game. Right? They're they're none of them are are game ending cards. They are they will feel more of like the mid range area. So um it's it's getting that nice like, hey, if you want to run this card, cool. It's not gonna be your game finisher. You're you're leading up to it to where you want to get in the mid game, and that'll help you get yourself into the end game. It'll help push for that really potential damage. And then you can finish them out another way of how the deck is supposed to work. Every other cross order combo that we had before was like 14 damage. 14 damage. 10 damage ruined their entire hand with Avalanche. 14 damage. Like it was it was just damage, 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 straight up damage. Just kill him, be done with it. This is how you win the game. Like you play this to end the game, always, why not just always have this in your hand at all times? This it's like, yeah, I mean there's a lot of cards that utilize paying this really uh uh really difficult to pay for these at sometimes. So just play it mid-game and then later draw those cards that you wanted to kill him with. Like this that's what I love about these combo uh the cross order combos is they are play it to be in a better position, not play it to win. That's what I like. I like that a lot. And I'm super happy they're doing that. Because the the tri order combos that we're getting, those should be more game enders. Those should be like, yeah, I waited enough to play these tri order ones. This is what should be winning me the game now, especially if they added those in. The dual order ones should not be in the same place that the tri order orders tri orders are when you put them in. Which I like. I like because it also makes you want to play dual order and tri order combos. Makes you want to play them both. So the dual orders can help you mid game, tri orders can help you late game. I like it. I like it a lot. Next one we have is Rocky Regeneration. Now everyone's like, Rocky Regeneration? I thought they made four of those movies. Like, where's the. F or no, they made five of them? Five or six? I don't know. They started coming out with Creed. I don't know. Eh, bad Rocky pun, I can tell. But it's three and three. Your other buffs can't be removed. So, already we got ourselves a little uh, spectral web here. This one can be removed, though. So, it's not full spectral web. But, the fact that your other buffs can't be removed, like, this is great. This is exactly what nature does. Nature builds up a really heavy board, all of its stuff, and then you slam this thing down. And then you get three healing. Three healing, three healing, while dealing two damage to your target. While dealing damage to your target. Deal micro damage to your target, micro heal yourself, but your board is pretty much untouchable. Mind you, they can still be returned. Uh, have we got a second try or no? We have not. Wranglethor, we have not gotten a second try order yet. We're waiting though. We're waiting. I like this for the way I run my Blooming Scorch. Exactly, Shibes. I think this works really well, Blooming Scorch. The other ones can't be removed. Mind you, that you means you can't be removed by you also. But I mean, for one turn, and then the second one, you just remove this because it is a fire buff and put two forests into play. You can do that too. Uh. But yeah, Rocky Regeneration, I think, is going to be really good, really fun to do. 
uh, especially in Bloom and Scorch. Bloom and Scorch, now that it's getting a lot of more uh, fire and nature buffs and stuff like that to run, it Bloom and Scorch could very well be a very buff-heavy deck. So Rocky Regeneration could be a nice slot in for that. Just healing, damage. Uh, mind you, a lot of the healing that nature still hasn't really got is never burst healing. We don't have anything in nature like Dusk Feeder or like uh, Tyrex Fixer. Nothing that heals you for like 6 or 7 or anything like that. Because Spore Feeder is gone. And we're sticking with Sumptrift Shaman. Like, we're, we're micro-healing our way in nature. So having this, where your buffs can't be removed, which might be your damage-reducing buffs, which might be your healing buffs. They can't be removed. And then just healing and healing and healing. Really good. I like this card. I don't think it's as impactful as maybe even this one or some other ones. But I know for a fact that I, I despise Spectre Web for what it was. Uh, this card is essentially a mini Spectre Web. Um, it doesn't have three corners, which means it'll still rotate out a lot quicker. Uh, it's better than Steel Fortification, because that one only protecting your mechanical buffs, whereas this one protects all your buffs for two turns, essentially. Um, but because of that, because of that, that's going to be really strong for nature. Nature has a lot of ways to restart, manipulate its own buffs on board, keep them going forever and ever and ever. Also, rip fungal spores. Yeah. But, I mean... They have a lot of really good fungal farm or uh, fungal cards as well, like fungal farmer, uh, other stuff like that. So, for the heal, of course. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But nature, nature, I think is still finding its stride. And there's nature definitely took a big leap forward with this set. Nature is probably one of my, I mean, it was one of my favorite orders. Probably is what like still my new one. But nature, like, it wasn't even really sure what it wanted to do. Uh, at, at the beginning, it was like, yeah, we want to have a lot of buffs, but buffs are really difficult to keep on board. So we're going to make it so that they can't be removed. Or, like, we're going to restart and we keep your board constant, stuff like that. And now that nature's finally kind of, like, worked out its kinks... Yeah, it, it was kind of... I'll admit. I mean... In Awakening, it was bonkers. Because it had Vine Lash. And Vine Lash Mimic Horror with Pollen Weaver, all the stuff that was, like, busted and had to get banned. Like, Dr. Attilus, he made a Trianu deck. He made Trianu what it is. That thing was stupid good. But ever since then, nature's been kind of kind of like up in the air and didn't know what it wanted to do. And now it's finding its groove. Now it's really finding its groove, really hitting it, its stride with its beasts, its uh, large wide buff boards. Uh, it's you know having more buffs than you. I get to do this. A uh, little bit of graveyard recursion with insects and stuff like that. It's, it's really starting to come together as an alignment. And I'm super excited to see that. I'm really excited to see like, hey guys, we finally worked out a lot of kinks. Let's keep going. So Rocky Regeneration, I like. I like it. Um, probably, honestly, compared to the other ones, it's probably one of the weaker ones that I've come across. But it's not weak as in the fact that it's like unplayable. It's just weak as in like it doesn't do as much as all the other ones. Hopefully, we hear more about insectoids, dude. Chives, I'm right there with you. I am right there with you. I want insects to be like a at least tier two, at least tier two. I said, I said insects will work. If it can be a proper, like, a mill insect with um, the sepid spawner that mills you and your opponent and then does all this other stuff, and then you, at the very end, can have the uh, sipid queen out that just gives you an, an insect attack card every turn and from your deck back to your hand. So you never really get to the deck check, but, like, that's how you just you mill your opponent out of resources and get them to the late game. And then if your opponent's out of deck, then you start dealing 8 damage with that one card. You just 8 damage, 8 damage, 8 damage. And that's where it comes in. Like, you, you kind of deal some chip damage. You be that, like, insect swarm annoying person. You slowly mill their deck as they, like, want to do things. You make them discard cards if you have to. Or just you make them draw with Ashwood Diva. But, like, only be able to play one or two resources a turn. Something like that. Something that's just really off-putting. And then as soon as their deck's gone, and your deck is gone, it's like, okay, cool. You can with what resources you have, and I will get infinite value off of this insect queen. Like, I would love that. I would love that with Insectoids, to be kind of like the, the Nature's Undead, where they really thrive off the graveyard, because, I mean, they, they eat dead things. They live in the ground, they eat dead things, it worked really well in Magic the Gathering. I, I could see that being a very viable plan for Nature in kin, or in, in Lightseekers, is if they utilize their graveyard in such a way that Dread does, uh, just with insects, stuff like that. Like, there was a card that said, like, deals damage equal to the amount of insect cards in your graveyard, like a really big bursty insect. But it had burned, so you couldn't keep getting it back. Like, that type of thing. Um, just be a buff that, like, after four turns, you draw cards equal to the number of insects in your discard pile. Like, that cards. Like, something like that to really get you to the empty deck. 
or like you you mill your opponent based on how many insects are in your discard pile like something that really utilizes the insects graveyard as opposed to like how many insects in your deck how many insects are like in your hand like you utilize the number of insects in your graveyard that would be really cool because then it's like all of them deal with something in the graveyard so it slowly just ramps up as you keep playing insect after insect after insect after insect, after insect where the insects will accumulate and br brood in the graveyard and then just become progressively better. That could be something good, or it could be something that just snowballs out of control and they kind of need to wean it back a little bit. Because they're already getting rid of the Mantix Raider, which has to do with your opponent's hand. So, like, that I thought was a good one, but once again, that was, like, 12 damage, right? That just was nuts. Like, they need to really... They really need to find tweak how they're going to do insects if they're going to go that way, which, cross my fingers, they at least take a side note and be like, well, that could be interesting. I don't know. But I'm I'm hoping for the best that they have something really cool with insects that is not just how Beast was like, yeah, it's damage, Beast's undead is, hey, come back from the graveyard, relive again, all this stuff, where insect, like, really utilizes it just being in the graveyard. Just this insect's in your graveyard, more insects are coming to be increased and go into the graveyard, like that kind of thing. That would be cool. I, I would think that would be a really fun thing. And I give, I give a lot of them burn, so that like when you mill yourself, there's a risk. You might mill something that is really good at that point in the game, and you can't bring it back. But because it's in the graveyard, it's like, well, at least it's feeding into the other insects in my deck type of thing. I could see that being a lot of burn. And then just have like one or two that you can just keep bringing back. But your insects, like the ones that utilize the graveyard stuff, give those things burn. Uh, so that like if you mill them, it's it's really high risk high reward with the civet spawners type of thing. So I know the Nemi fans are eagerly waiting. Shives, you're absolutely right. Let's just get right to it. Winds of Plague is an XX. It's not six. It's nine. That's right. It's nine. Healing. Your enemy may discard one attack card to reduce this by four. Also damage, and your opponent can reduce this by four if they discard a defend card. So it's like, hey, this is either an 18 point swing. Or you discard two cards to make it a 10-point swing. Still pretty good. I'll still take five healing, five damage to you if it makes you discard two cards. A healing and an attack card. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that any day of the week. Yeah. You know what Dread is really good at? Getting combos back. You know what this color is? It's Dread. Yeah. You know what Storm is also really good at? Getting combos back. Yeah. Keep bringing those Winds of Plague back. For every six insects in your graveyard, increase all damage and healing by one. I mean, if that was a hero, oh god, that hero would be nuts. I think that gnome would have to be increased to eight. Not six. I think eight. Um, Because it's really easy to just sip and spawn to yourself and get that in super quick. And then Insect Swarm starts chipping away super quick. I think eight is a good number. So that way, like, it can't be increased to more than, like, at the end of the at the end of the end game, it can't be increased to more than, like, two or three extra damage. Because I think it, getting anything higher than that late game would just be bonkers. You wouldn't even need that much damage. That, that's that's overwinning, I would think, Wranglethor. That is overwinning. Where, like, yeah, you want to get you want to get your empty deck check soon, so eight is fine. Eight is fine. We already have a uh, Hive Queen who does, if your opponent has... Uh, more than seven cards in their hand, your insect cards deal one more damage. So, like... Or maybe put the different in there. Yeah. Like, different insects? That could be good. Put different insects, yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I mean... Play Fusion, if you're taking notes... Insects working from the graveyard. Putting that out there, right? Just kind of subtly... Subtly scooching a sticky note over to you that's kind of half stuck on the table, so it's going to make a really annoying noise when it, like crinkles and finally skips over to you but it's coming it's coming i'm pushing my ideas your way take them or leave them i don't know hopefully it's a yes but dude yeah winds of plague i am super stoked this card looks amazing it it is not on the power level that chilling curse was because chilling curse was stupidly strong no chilling curse does not get to exist anymore i'm fine with winds of plague i'm fine with an 18 point swing if that's what it means but no you should not have a combo for four turns where your opponent only gets one action. No matter if they get increased stuff, they only get one action for four turns. Like, no. No. That was like once you put it down, you had four turns to just steamroll your opponent because you got so much value. 
You laid it when their hand was like one card, and you're like, cool, you're only going to really draw one card a turn. I'm going to keep drawing two and just blow you out. Like, that was... No, that was too much power. That was too much power. That was too much power. Because Winds of Plague, I highly like where Winds of Plague is coming at. Like I said, Storm and Dread are the two that have the easiest time getting back combos from the discard pile. So getting this to just, like, keep playing Winds of Plague over and over and over again. Yeah, this this is going to be nuts. This is going to be like, hey, it's pretty windy outside. Like, four times in a row. This is going to be a really good... Like, a deck is going to be built around this. I'm going to build a deck around this that just brings back combo cards. Just keeps bringing them back. Running for call it scrap heap. You could. You could. I feel like machines and robots are are in a really good spot right now where like they run off of each other because I mean a machine works together with all the really good parts. Build a robot out of machine, all that stuff where they work really well well together. I think insects work really well in the graveyard, because that theme that seems more thematic to this that animal type. But uh I mean yeah, you could have one card that just utilizes like I mean I don't think it would deal damage based on stuff in the graveyard. I think it would be more like you get to choose like two machine cards back from the discard pile and put them in your hand. Like a, a, a salvager, an umbrella salvager perhaps, who like goes into the junk pile and is like, yeah, I could, I could still work with these. I could still work with these. And just pulls them back out. Insects burrow. They live in the ground. They eat dead things. I'm going graveyard. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So guys, that's it. That's it for the card reviews up to today. Now we're getting obviously more tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tuesday for Tech Tuesday. I think everyone here is still waiting for what they're doing with Time Jumper Rylock. Because as we've discussed, he doesn't have explosive, he doesn't have wind, he has no buff removal. So that like in the back of my mind, that's me going like, okay, okay, every Tuesday now I gotta look for for something that would kind of help him balance out with the other mythic heroes. You know what I mean? Like. What are they gonna are they gonna give him a new buff removal? Are they gonna give him just a bunch of stuff that just keeps returning the board? Are they gonna utilize a tech card that removes or returns combo buffs? What are they gonna do? But no, I think it'll be fine. I mean he's he's a really strong controlly type person. Like he is exactly what mid range wants to be. It controls your board while damaging you and healing himself at the same time. Like he just does he just does so much together. Uh, while like controlling your board, like that's really big tempo swings. Um, but yeah, I, I, unless you splash weapon and he doesn't have buff removal, and I'm like, would you splash in the turret to get superiority over tech? Uh, with all these new amazing buffs, would you really want to remove your own buffs with Craze Bomber? Like I don't know what you would do. Maybe you splash Aaron just to run Thunder Slugs. I don't know. I don't know. Sky Rider is already a good item. Why not? So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Or do you just run Crystal Core and put Crystal Leeches in? I don't know. You tell me. I don't know. Anyway, guys, 